Hey, how are you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with crank.com and with that metalstation.com. And today I'm getting to have a chat with Tom McKay, who's due to release his debut EP called The Demon Sultan, 18th of February, 2022. It's a bloody awesome EP, man. I have been cracking it all bloody morning. <laughs> Great way to wake up with some really black coffee and some black metal and some real cool symphonic vibes to it as well, dude. Really, really cool EP. Congratulations and thanks for making some time to chat with me about it all. Well, no problem. Thank you so much. Yeah, I tend to wake up in the morning just blasting death metal as well. It tends to, it really gets the juices pumping, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it, it does i'm bouncing around in the mornings and people go man you have far too much energy in the mornings but once you put that metal on you get that coffee going man you can't help it but vibe and this album is a cracking ep and Lindsay schoolcraft on there as well first off man tell me how this whole project started for you because i went and checked out your, your singles your reign of fire there and hung by the wings of fate how how did this get going for you what inspired you to get going and tell me a little bit more behind it all well, for the it's pretty much like a normal like writing process that I felt I had here, like compared to other artists on the planet. And that is just I just started writing because I've been writing music for God, since I was 17. I think I started writing a bunch of tunes, just coming up with whatever interested me the most. And then last year in 2020, you know, the pandemic had wonderful effects in terms of creativity so uh i just got to writing and i started i started actually writing with the uh not with the first single with uh the song faith in the faceless started writing with that for the ep back in late 2020 and then i just i just kept writing and then uh, just kept writing that i started writing up uh dishonored kings i had the idea i wanted an ep so i kept writing more songs and i got a couple of the ones that i liked thrown together and uh that is this ep in a nutshell yeah well the the pandemic had some really fucking negative effects obviously to the world but also oh, yeah. for, for musicians like yourself do you feel like it kind of look we're all locked at home now do you think it inspired you to go okay now's the time to actually work on this ep and get it out well the pandemic had a lot of effects in terms of yeah just because like we're all locked at home so it forced me to be more creative not just with the music but with my youtube channel as well yeah. being able to just keep on doing like the youtube stuff and also with writing because now i'm like well uh my job doesn't exist anymore so let's get some shit done you know let's get some writing done and uh you, you have time better not just spend it you know watching watching youtube and jerking youtube so it's it's worth uh it's worth get, get taking some time to actually get some creative juices flowing yeah talking about youtube i've got to mention your youtube channel metal robot reviews as well um how, how does that influence you with the, the songwriting and everything Do you, does that inspire you listening to all these albums as well and you go fuck man i gotta get motivated and get something out it there as well definitely helped with that process because I, I i've been listening to so much music for the past five years uh it's it's inspired so much of like uh, all the music i've heard for so long just i hear so many different styles so many different uh influences from different bands and many of their influences being shown in their music i just hear so much and whether i was conscious for it or not it all just kind of came together and got it kind of forced its way into the music, whether I knew it or not. Of course, there are the main influences that I had, like, you know, Opeth, uh, Epica, a uh, little bit of Event Sevenfold, mostly like the, like some of the mainstream groove stuff. But a lot of the styles that I listened to and have heard for the YouTube channel have kind of reared their heads into the songwriting process, whether I, in, you know, whether I noticed it or not. And that, in many ways, created the sound that you got. Yeah, it's fun listening to all these different styles and genres. And I've been the same the last five years, just taking in all this bloody music, all these different styles, all these different metal genres. And um, I've got to mention Canada, the metal that's coming out of there as well. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've heard so much the last few years through what Curtis is doing over there, but also there's Asher Media as well that I've um, had a lot of music sent over for as well. The Canadian music scene, it must be good working over there, eh? There's a lot of great Canadian artists in uh, in the country, in Ontario or all over the place. Uh, like, of course, Unleash the Archers is a big one that you could point to. Uh, one of my personal favorites from this year has to be Luthero. They really came 
with amazingness with their last album. I was not expecting that, but there's also like so many like uh, Epoch uh, is there. Dusk Walker is a really good one. And of course, a new one that's just coming up this year, uh, back last year, I think, uh, was uh, Shot Down Twice is a really good like hard rock band. But there's a lot of great styles that are coming out of Canada that you just a lot of it you don't get in um, in the States or even in Europe. It's just so much amazing music coming out of uh, the Canadian scene. Which is ironic, seeing as we're stereotypically the most polite people on the planet, and then you get such visceral, like, just disgusting metal, and you're just like, how the fuck is that Canadian? Yeah, and it's been good to be able to check out more music from all over the world. I do have to mention that the last couple of mm -hmm. years, not being able to see as many shows, it's given people like ourselves more time to dive in and check out the, the bands that are coming through. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. Um, can I ask, how did you first like get into playing um, the instruments? You did you you play guitar, bass, and drums on this, do you? Uh, no, I. So what I do is I just do the uh, guitar and vocals. Okay. Everything else essentially is programmed uh, using wow. MIDI. So yeah, yeah, uh, that took a long time to actually figure out how to get decent. But uh, so guitars, I've been playing guitar since I was seventeen years old. I picked it up in high school, like last year of high school, because I had an extra space for an elective. And I was like, oh, there's a guitar class here. My older brother's been playing guitar for years by this point. So, OK, I'll get into guitar. It'd be worth looking into. Right. And from that point forward, I just, you know, started learning the basics. But I was just dicking around on the instrument as much as possible, just coming up with some weird shit, especially since I also joined my first band the exact same year, basically a month into picking up the guitar. Bad idea. And <laughs> I just... <laughs> so what if it's a punk band? Yeah, really, it was not a punk band. I don't know what it was, but nonetheless, it was... <laughs> uh, but it just inspired me to keep uh, playing the guitar. And I also started really getting into uh, just the idea of uh, writing music. I was already a cre pretty creative person growing up. Like I, I enjoy doing anything creative to get my brain working. And so music just became a new outlet for me. And as I honed my craft over the years, all of a sudden, you know, it starts, uh, it starts really coming together. And again, it's, it's led up to this point where I have the EP and it's a lot of the lessons I've learned over the years in terms of music theory, in terms of songwriting, and also in terms of how the fuck guitars work. <laughs> And all that stuff it just builds up to this point yeah and, and the ep it's just, that ep man like i want to ask about Lindsay schoolcraft How, tell me about the guests first i'm going to talk about Lindsay schoolcraft unreal x cradle of filth man and i've seen her all over the place lately and it's unreal to see how was it working with her and how did you get her on board well, I've known her since 2019, again, through Metal Robot Reviews, because I that was when I first interviewed her as like a promotion for her debut uh, full length, Martyr. And since that point, you know, we've been basically talking like we've been friends ever since. Uh, like not the same way that I'm friends with like people around, like in my hometown where I can yeah. like just pop by and say, hello, <laughs> but like, <laughs> like and we know each other. Uh, we've talked uh, quite a bit and she's more than happy to, uh, if I ask her to come on my show, she'll be like, yeah, let me find some time. Uh, she definitely helped out with the latest episode of my podcast talking about Travis Scott, but that's another instance of her, like of her being very helpful to another person in the metal scene. She's very like, like you said, all over the place. I think someone said, someone referred, referred to as the goth mom of metal. And I have to agree with that. Um, but anyway, so when I was writing The Benighted One, I was like, I have this section here and I didn't realize until after I got used to it, oh, I can't sing that high. So I kind of got, as does happen, that's, I mean, pretty much how Hung by the Wings of Fate happened. Yeah. But, yeah, so I was like, well, I want to, I, I kind of figured I wanted to bring on a guest anyways, but now that I have this section, I'm like, oh, this would be a good time to bring on a guest. So I, so I thought about it. I was like, what would, whose voice would work here? Lindsay Schoolcraft. So I got in contact with her through Facebook and said, hey, so I have a project I'm working on and I wanted to know, <laughs> basically just like, just like the most awkward like person you could ever meet. Like, I, I wanted to know if you <laughs> would like to be, I asked her to be on a song and she said, absolutely. Uh, just send over the stuff. And uh, while, cause she was working on Antiqua at the time. 
So she said, just send the stuff over. I'll take a look at it when I get a chance and uh, I'll see what I can do. And uh, I'll also get back to you with, you know, anything else. I said, okay, cool. And then like a month later, it was like basically a, not even like five hours it took to be able to get those tracks back because we were going back and forth. I had the lyrics written. I had the melody written, but she did like the harmonies. She came up with all this stuff, this fun stuff for the, for that track. And I was like, this is a lot of fun. And she inspired most of the song afterwards, like many of the revisions that came along with it. Cause I was still technically writing the song as I was getting these stems. Yeah, it, it came out really, really well. And uh, it, it had to be the first single off of the EP as well. It was already planned to be, because I think it definitely shows a different direction compared to the previous singles. Uh, yeah. But it's definitely like a good way to, to show like, oh, this is very different from what I've done before. And it just really kicks the fucking door down, if you ask me. Yeah, it, it starts out really well, and the orchestration just kind of sets the mood at the start there on that opening one, the um, Call to the Demon Sultan. Tell us a little bit about that orchestration, because you had Nathan Gross, and tell me a little bit about that artist that you had come on board and help with that. Yeah, well, uh, what, because that was originally Call to the Demon Sultan, the title track, that was actually non-existent for yep. the EP when it was being written. That was originally supposed to be attached to Dishonored King. Okay. So it was all like this Call to Demon Sultan. It was basically an, an almost seven minute track. Uh, and, I, and I basically just kind of wanted an opening for that song. And I couldn't, for the life of me, come up with anything that was that I was happy with. So I reached out to, uh, to Sam Astaroth and I asked, hey, do you know anybody who is, you know, competent with orchestration? And he said, ah, Nathan Gross. So he sent me to him. I got in contact and said, hey, how you doing? I wanted to know if you'd be happy to do this. And he said, sure. And he, I sent him a chord progression and I sent him the, the original demo for Dishonored King. And he came back with this fucking uh, jo almost Jaws themed kind of thing. Uh, and I was like, that not only met my expectations, it surpassed it, good sir, thank you. Yeah, it came like, out. Legit... It, it came oh, out. Sorry, it came out really, really bloody well, and it must have been. Um, I want to ask, how, how did you keep yourself motivated through all of this? Because you're doing the YouTube channel, you, you, you're doing this EP, which would have taken so many bloody hours to do this, as you mentioned. Um, how did you keep yourself motivated through all of this? The thing with me is that uh, I have ADHD, so I'm doing something anyways at all times, regardless of whether or not I like if I can be sit lying in bed like I got to go to bed now. I got to be up in three hours. Oh, a new riff. Awesome. And then I go <laughs> and get up and start right. Like shit just kept coming and I kept coming up with uh, new ideas for a certain section of the song or I kept coming up with new ideas for new songs. It's like there's like the EP has four, technically three songs on it. Yep. But I think I had like, if I look at my hard drive, I'm sure I had like six, maybe seven tracks total that I was like, just kind of dicking around with the ones that came out were just the best options for me and the best ones that, you know, I spent way more time on. Uh, but I just, you know, I kept writing and writing and refining as I went. Uh, every once in a while, I just opened it up and be like, okay, anything I can do here, or should we just, and stick with this or anything we can add and eventually i'd be like playing through and i'd be thinking oh maybe i could do this maybe i could do that so it's a very natural process i just kept writing <laughs> it didn't stop <laughs> yeah um and the artwork on it kind of sets the, the scene as well tell us a little bit about who you got to do the artwork and the artwork on the album as well oh. um so I, I went to Fiverr for that one and I and I got in contact with a guy uh, whose username is Fear Sorrow. I don't I think he has his own design company. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's something similar. But I got in contact with him and I was like, hey, I don't want to do the album mark this time. You want to help? And he said, because th that's what I did with the previous singles. But uh, I said, hey, I haven't. Here's this uh, what I'm doing here. Can you make something? And, you know, for a small fee he definitely was able to come back with something that i saw the first thing and i immediately just sat there and i'm like there go my pants and i just because <laughs> i just i loved looking at this i'm like this is amazing holy shit i just gave him the name and the style and along with the, some of the track listing and he did the rest 
And yeah. that's what he came back with. I was like, wow, I was impressed. Yeah. Not and- really surprised because I kind of figured he's, his talent was very good, but I was like, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. No, it looks really, really bloody good. Where's the best place people can head along and, and support you? Like chuck in some pre-orders maybe for the album. I noticed you have it on Bandcamp as well, yes. which I like to plug a lot doing these bloody interviews because it's a good way to support the artists. But where else? Is there anywhere else that people can head along and support you as well with this? Well, it's definitely, so far the first single, The Benighted One, is on as many streaming platforms as possible, I believe. Uh, DistroKid doesn't get all the links. So it's just kind of, you got to search for it on whatever streaming platform you've got, but I'm sure it's there. Uh, But as the ones I definitely know about is on Apple Music, it's on Spotify, it's on Bandcamp, of course. Uh, It's on, I think, Tidal, I think it's on Amazon. Um, There's a lot of different places. Just search my name and you'll probably find it there. Uh, Same thing goes for the EP. And yeah, it's on Bandcamp. It's one of the best places you can go for pre-orders, especially if you do want to support what I'm doing. And uh, the, right now it's digital, but I am looking to get CD pre-orders involved and maybe a couple t-shirts. <laughs> Who knows? That's the guy because metalheads like me, we love our bloody black shirts. And oh, I've got don't like, I fucking so, know it. <laughs> so many shirts. Don't I fucking all over. know it, yeah. You can never get enough, you know, and you go to shows, you're buying shirts, you're ordering it. It's the one like mad obsession I have, like records. I went in through, um, when this fucking covid shit hit i was like man i can't go to shows it was shattering me so i went and got a vinyl a record player and started a a vinyl collection as well like i'm look i can't go to shows so now i'm just going to start buying vinyl just to add to my bloody collection of metal shit hell yeah (laughs) so so, i I know i know i know what you're saying too because uh for that if anybody who sees my who sees my youtube channel and goes through various videos can see I have an, a shirt for every video. <laughs> I like the, you never know what shirt I'm going to end up wearing. Like every given video, it just it changes all the time. Yeah, Metal Robot reviews. It's it must be a lot of fun going. Like as I was mentioned before, going through that as those albums. The 2021 was an absolutely fucking belter of a year the last couple of years yeah we've had all this crap but the amount of of great albums that have been coming out last year was just in bloody saying is there any albums that, as we come into like january now the 12th here is there any albums that stuck out to you that you're still cranking from 2021 that you're just hammering and just oh epica's latest is definitely a big one of course uh, given my influence of course uh trivium the new trivium record holy shit um i mentioned lutero a second ago uh I'm trying, I'm trying to make sure I don't spoil my best of the year list too much because I haven't even finished that video. But because, <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of great... Uh, one, I actually am still finishing up the two-part series for Signum Draconis, uh, Inferno. It's a fucking powerhouse of an album, of a double album. It's a, basically a recreation of Dante's Inferno, and it really does not pull any punches. I'm still working on part two. It's actually hopefully, hopefully coming out this Friday at the time of recording this. Um, I'll have to wait and see, but I, I'm still working on that. And it's, yeah, that album is really fucking good. Yeah, man, it was a great year. Everyone head over and check out Metal Robot Reviews. Throw them down a sub, man. This guy's got some bloody killer videos over there and reviews, man. Tom McKay, this has been an absolute bloody pleasure chatting with you about this EP. I'm looking forward to having a chat with you in the future as well, man. Call to the Demon Soul that comes out 18th of February. Everyone needs to grab that, put that in the stereo, crank it really loud for the neighbours. Tom, any last words, shout outs or thank yous you'd like to add in there, my friend? Yeah, uh, definitely pick up pick up the EP, set the pre-orders, play it for your neighbors, make sure that they can hear it down the block. Uh, even if the cops come by because you're being too loud, make sure they can hear it as well. Make sure they're aware of it and make sure to tell them to pre-order it. Uh, make sure that uh, if they ask who it is, just say it's dogs barking. Uh, <laughs> just pre- promote as much as possible, but also, you know, very importantly, you know, Subscribe to Metal Robot Reviews. Follow me on socials at Team K715 or Metal Robot Socials at the Metal Robot Facebook and Twitter at the dot Metal Robot on Instagram. And also everything I do for Metal Robot Reviews, videos, reviews, press, and so much more on the metalrobot.com. Awesome. Tom, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on the show, man. Cheers, man. Mm-hmm.